So in the last lecture we saw Fourier series and Fourier transform for uh, like Fourier series for periodic functions and Fourier transform for non-periodic functions. Uh, whatever we discussed there in the last lecture was mostly in the context of deterministic signals. But now we will see that how those ideas and how those concepts of deterministic signals can be extended to stochastic random um, um, stochastic stationary processes and mostly we will talk in terms of energy and power this you will see uh, as we move forward. So, this is a typical uh, Fourier series expansion of a function with which has the periodicity of 2 t and for that case we did some transformation uh, in terms of variable transformation and that function can be written in the f uh, in the in the form of sums in terms of cosines and sines where x t as you can see here is half uh, of a naught plus uh, summation between n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos pi t by t plus b n sin pi t by t capital T. So, this is Fourier series expansion of a, fun is, uh, of a function with uh, general periodicity of twice of t and these are that is how we estimate um, the coefficients of Fourier series a n and b n by multiplying both side by sine and cos terms that we have seen. So, for non periodic function we saw that uh, we cannot have Fourier, trans uh, Fourier series, but what we get is the Fourier integral or Fourier transform pair. So, a non periodic function can be written as uh, x t is equal to minus infinity to infinity as you can see here p of f e to the power 2 pi f t where f is frequency t is in time. So, and on the left hand side is the inverse Fourier transform. So, x t is sorry uh, the p f is the fo forward Fourier transform and x t is the inverse Fourier transform. So, th essentially we can represent a time domain function if x t is a time domain function we can write it in terms of a Fourier domain or frequency domain function which is p of f and if we have p of f we can come back in the time domain by using the inverse Fourier transform here on the right hand side. In terms of general variables uh, which general formulation which you would have seen for Fourier transformation is like this in terms of omega where omega is the angular frequency and we can write it as 2 pi f and this 1 by square root of 2 pi is essentially coming from the change of variable term it is if we do it only one side then it will be 1 uh, one upon 2 pi, but we want to distribute it on both the sides that is why it is 1 by square root of 2 pi. So, the condition for the existence of Fourier series and Fourier transform is that in case of Fourier series the condition it is that it should be a periodic function and the function should be well behaved well behaved means it should be a continuous function and defined at each point in the inter um, between the intervals. Whereas, uh, in case of Fourier transform in case of Fourier integrals or Fourier transform the condition is more strict that the non periodic function which we have it should be uh, integrable between the limits of minus infinity to infinity that it, it the integration should hold should exist it should not be finite uh, it should not be infinite it should be finite. So, that essentially implies that uh, the integration should tend to 0 when whenever we have t uh, uh, tending to in, uh, infinity whether it is on the negative side or whether on the positive side the integration of x t should tend to 0 and that typically means, but not always we can say that x t also tends to 0 when t is tending to either plus infinity or minus infinity. So, a function as you can see on the left hand side this is a function sort of function a kind of function for which we can expect that the Fourier transform will exist or Fourier transform will hold whereas for the right hand side function which is of course well behaved but we can see that as the time is increasing on the both side on the both side on the negative side and as well as positive side the function is increasing so that means the uh, fourier integral may not um, fourier integral or fourier series uh, fourier transform may not exist here essentially because that the integration between infinity minus infinity to infinity may become infinite so, in spectral analysis of non periodic functions. So, as we were doing in case of uh, periodic functions with the period of 2 pi and uh, with the general period of 2 t, x t can be written as in the form of uh, 
Fourier integral or what we call inverse Fourier transform this particular case in terms of uh, integration minus infinity to infinity g omega e to the power i omega t dt where omega is the angular frequency and the total energy dissipated between the interval minus infinity to plus infinity in this case is also uh, in time domain it is uh, integration over minus infinity to infinity x square t uh, dt which is in the frequency domain equivalent to minus infinity integration uh, uh, between minus infinity to infinity g omega square uh, g omega mod square d omega. So, this is essentially Pascal's theorem for the case of Fourier transforms or Fourier integrals. So, this you can prove this I will give as an assignment that you prove this um, this equivalence what I have shown here, but essentially what this theorem is telling us that we have a decomposition of total energy as a sum of terms where each term is representing the contribution of a particular group of frequency component. So, precisely speaking g omega square d omega is representing the contribution to the total energy from those components in x t whose frequency lies between omega and uh, omega plus d omega. Thus, we have a continuous distribution of frequency as you can see because integration is involved. So, that means it is a continuous distribution. So, the quantity g omega square or uh, g omega mod square itself does not represent the energy rather it represents energy density function. So, this idea of energy density function is coming from the fact that here we are dealing with the distribution of energy over continuous range of frequencies and the it has an analogy with the uh, continuous random variable as we know if we have a continuous random variable x the probability density function we write their probability density function uh, um, as the probability that x will have a value between x and x plus delta x is equal to f x uh, delta x where f x is the probability density function. So, g omega also is uh, energy density function. So, uh, g omega mod square is an even function as you can see this mathematically and we have plot I have plotted it down there. So, as you can see there also that uh, g omega mod square is equal to g omega mod minus square and g uh, minus omega means g function of minus omega means if we write it inside if we take this minus inside uh, term inside what it becomes essentially a complex conjugate of g omega. So, g omega is a complex number because e to the power i, uh, i is i it is e to the power i theta type i omega type. So, it is a complex number. So, g minus omega will be a complex conjugate of g uh, g omega. So, what happens now after doing this background study that energy uh, uh, energy density function we have for non periodic functions. So, what do we do when we have a uh, stochastic random uh, stochastic stationary process. So, far our discussion is mostly about the deterministic functions. So, and stochastic process importantly is just not a single function rather it represents a general and infinite number of realizations of the process. So, there can be n number of realizations. So, as you all know stochastic process means it is uh, some function of time, but as well as there are different realizations of that process. But for simplicity in this case we will consider a single realization and the uh, assumption will be that the expectation of x t the mean of x t is 0 over all t. So, this is just a, many, a simple uh, realization the figure which you can see of a stochastic random process. So, some question now to ask because we have some conditions for existence of Fourier series and Fourier transform. So, there are some related question now can we represent a single realization as a Fourier series single realization of a stochastic stationary process. So, what would be your answer? The answer is clearly no because we do not know if this process is periodic because as you know for Fourier series to exist the function should be periodic. Then the next question does the Fourier transform or Fourier integral exist? The answer is also no because we do not know whether this process is absolutely integrable. That means that x t is integrable between minus infinity to infinity and this integration integrable means it has a finite value it is not infinite. So, then we are here at impasse. So, essentially it is a big problem that we cannot either take a Fourier series or I can uh, take a Fourier transform, but we can make a transformation as we did in the case of non periodic functions. That transformation is that we chop our signal between an interval minus t to t such that that a new signal is equal to x t 
our original um, realization between this interval and outside it is 0. So, now our signal we can make this signal as if that it is a um, function which which has a value finite value within a uh, um, range of time within an interval of time, but outside it is 0. So, otherwise a stationary process is continuing from minus infinity to plus infinity, but we have chopped our signal between a time interval where it has a finite value and beyond that it is 0. So, the same thing is written here. So, if I write the new function x capital T such that it is equal to the original function between this time interval uh, minus t to t and outside it is 0, then I can write the Fourier transform pair for this, where x to uh, x capital T can be written as in the inverse Fourier transform and g t is the Fourier forward Fourier transform of x t. But the same thing, it is in the range minus infinity to infinity, but when I write this in, uh, integration between minus t, integration limit between minus t to t, this capital x t function will become essentially x t, because between minus t to t it is x t. So, our Fourier transform pair within this limit becomes 1 upon square root of 2 pi minus integration minus t to capital T x t e to the power minus omega t d t. Again we can write the energy as we have seen in the couple of slides back g t omega square for this function is the contribution to the total energy of x t contributed by the components which has frequency in the range omega n omega d plus uh, omega plus d omega. But this energy density function which we have just defined couple of slides back when the limit is tending to infinity this energy density function will go to the infinity it will not exist it is obvious because our process is in finite process it is uh, traveling or it is existing from minus infinity to plus infinity and by physics also for a steady state nature of a stationary process the amount in it of energy required is infinite to sustain it from minus infinity to infinity. So, when t is going to infinity of course, our energy density function will not exist. This is a big issue. So, if we cannot explain uh, this process stochastic stationary process, yet we are still talking about a single realization of that. If we cannot explain it in terms of energy density, we can still uh, explain this or we can focus on the power. because when uh, power is nothing but the uh, energy divided by time or energy loss per unit time. So, if our total interval it is from minus t to t, so the total interval will be 2 t and in that case limit t tending to infinity, we can write uh, the power as g t omega mod square divided by 2 t. So, this is our power and this can exist and as you can see t if t is increasing to infinity, this power will become 0 this can become any other value also, but in this particular case it will become 0. So, this uh, power term is telling us contribution to the total power of x t contributed by those components which are having frequency between m and uh, sorry omega and omega plus d omega. So, this keep in mind this is very important terms is coming uh, now. We can call this as power spectral density that is where the concept of power spectral density because g t omega mod square was spectral density uh, is, um, energy density. Since energy density may not exist when t is tending to infinity for a stochastic stationary process, in that case we talk about power spectral density because power spectral density is just divided by the total time interval. So, in that case the power spectral density may exist and that is why we talk about power spectral density in case of a stochastic random. Um, stochastic stationary process. This is very important. However, we are still talking about only one realization here. So, if we talk about all the realizations, all the possible re realizations of that stochastic uh, random um, stationary process. Now, we are calling this limit t tending to infinity g 2 g t omega square and uh, omega mod square divided by 2 t as power spectral density or power density function. And if we write it inside an expectation, because when we are doing it over all the realizations what we can do, we can take an average of this. So, just we write an expectation of this limit t uh, tending to infinity e uh, expectation of, uh, of g t omega mod square divided by 2 t, this function is written a small h omega. This h omega is the power spectral density function or power density function h omega d omega average 
over all realization is the contribution to the total power from components omega plus d omega so now this is average over all the realization the function h omega is called non normalized power spectral density function of xt or simply the spectrum some sometime we still uh, we call it x just the spectrum but non normalized it plays a fundamental role in spectral analysis of stationary process so energy density with energy density we cannot work in case of stochastic um, stationary processes but we can work with the spectral density uh, power spectral density so that's why it is very important and why it is important we will see in next couple of slides so for periodic function just to summarize for periodic function we have distribution of power over a discrete range of frequency we did this in uh, last class and in um, last class yeah i think in last couple of slides also that for non periodic function we have a distribution of energy over a continuous range of frequencies in case of non periodic because we were writing again their integrations for stationary stochastic process for which h omega exists the condition is that h omega should exist first we have a distribution of power over a continuous range of frequencies so in this case also we have power as we were having power in case of periodic function but here we are talking about a continuous range of frequencies so here we are talking about densities however h omega may not exist over all frequencies so now i am going to do some simple mathematics i am going to show you some very interesting results after this even if you follow a little bit of mathematics from this uh, this will be very interesting for you and the result will be more interesting so if i write f omega as the fourier transform of ft so f omega square will be the fourier transform of convolution of ft with itself so that is essentially f omega square fourier transform of minus infinity to infinity f u f u minus um, f function of u minus t here should be i forgot to write e to the power minus omega t so but this applies to the deterministic function this doesn't apply to the stochastic processes however uh, there is a similarity when we are writing this function uh, f mod omega square uh, integration minus infinity to infinity f u f u minus t d u this has a similarity if you look the expectation of the auto covariance function x t x t minus tau or t plus del tau so this is essentially quite close to th this is a convolution theorem or convolution integral quite close to the auto covariance this is very important i think convolution you already know now uh, that uh, the shifted you shift a function so in this case you are shifting a uh, the same function with time and then multiplying it with the same function and then summing it or integrating it i think that's what same um, convolution is done in case of machine learning convolutional neural networks but i think slightly some difference is still there so this we can prove and we we will prove that like for example if f omega is the fourier transform of ft and g omega is the fourier transform of gt as we have written here so f omega multiplied with the conjugate of g omega is equal to minus uh, integration between the limits minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus omega t kt where kt is um, a function um, integra um, integration between minus infinity to infinity f u g u minus t d u this we can prove here as you can see um, in place of kt i am directly writing this integration inside so one integration is of the fourier transform another is uh, the integration of the kt function so uh, these both the integration limits are between minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus omega t is because of the fourier transform definition f u g u minus t uh, d u d t you can see here and then we can do some mathematical uh, sort of manipulation because i can write e to the power minus i omega u here and here i can write e to the power i omega u minus t so if you see this u minus t e to the power i uh, omega u minus t and e to the power minus i omega u if you will multiply them they will essentially become e to the power minus i omega t so we are just separating these two integrations here e to the power minus i omega u f u and the second integration is inside the curly brackets e to the power i omega u minus t g u minus t d t d u but this function uh, e to the power i omega u minus t g u minus t t by just change of simple change of variable we can write it as the fourier transform of a complex conjugate of g omega so this is fourier transform and then conjugate of g 
so you take the fourier transform fourier transform is g omega and it's complex co complex complex conjugate hence e to the power minus omega t kt dt we can write a g star omega which is complex conjugate of g inside the curly brackets the integration is e to the power minus i omega u f u du this is again a definition of fourier transform so essentially we can prove that uh, whatever we asked to prove that e to the power minus omega t integration minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus omega t kt dt is equal to multiplication of the two fourier transform where one is the co complex conjugate of g so when uh, if ft is becoming equal to gt in this case the left hand side will become because if you multiply a complex con uh, one complex number with its complex conjugate it will be mod and then square so same thing is here mod and then square uh, is equal to minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus omega t into kt dt where kt will be uh, integration minus uh, between this convolution integral kt will be integration between minus infinity to infinity f u f u minus t d u so this g t omega now we can write for this case of using this definition of inverse fourier uh, for forward fourier transform g t omega square as the same applying the same thing uh, what we have proved up there it um, integration between minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus omega tau this is there in plus of k t we write a new function we could have written the f u and f u minus t but i am writing x t u divided by square root of 2 pi x t u minus tau divided by square root of 2 pi uh, 2 pi d u d tau is outside but the form is similar now you can see interestingly why i am writing it like this because x t u multiplied with x t u minus tau will give me a auto covariance function so this is essentially an auto covariance function for a single realization and if we divide it by 2t it will become power earlier it was just the energy density and uh, now it is power spectral density because there are two square root of 2 uh, pi are involved so it will become 1 by 2 pi so r dash tau r dash tau is the co auto covariance function for a single realization keep in mind where it is defined as 1 by 2t integration between the limits minus infinity to infinity x t capital t u x t u minus tau d u because x t we are taking uh, the function between limits minus t to t and we are saying beyond that it doesn't exist so this definition has to be there then h omega h omega is the power spectral density limit t tending to infinity expectation of power spectral density function of single realization then we take this expectation over all the realization so what we get it will depend how the uh, auto covariance function will look like for one single realization so for example this definition we are again taking that uh, for single realization our auto covariance function exists only between when tau is between minus 2t and 2t and beyond that it is zero so in that case for the case when tau is less than uh, or equal to 2t we can just write this expectation uh, x u into x u minus uh, mod of tau d u in the limit from minus t to t so this is minus t but in tau is also there on the both side so tau minus tau uh, lower limit is this and the and upper limit is t and then it is 1 by 2 t integration between minus tau to tau expectation of this is over all the realization is r tau r tau is there and then you just integrate it with respect to u so with respect to u if you integrate this you will get u and then if you put the limits of integration it is 1 minus a mod of tau divided by 2t in where r tau i'm just writing r tau is the expectation of your auto covariance function for tau being greater than 2t mod of tau when on both side uh, tau beyond minus 2t and 2t it is zero as we are saying that this um, this this condition we have applied that we take a part of the signal because we cannot take the entire stationary signal because uh, then the integration will not exist in case so the same idea we have applied here so then in that case h omega what we are calling power spectral density function limit t tending to infinity divided by 1 pi 1 upon 2 pi integration between minus 2t to 2t this was coming from our this result here e to the power minus omega tau r tau so when t is uh, going to infinity or tending to infinity 
this first term 1 minus mod of tau divided by 2 t will become 0 as you can imagine here. So, only what we are left with h omega is equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration between the limits minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus omega tau uh, r tau d tau. So, this is very interesting result. So, this is nothing but the Fourier transform of r tau what is our auto covariance function. So, your power spectral density h omega was power spectral density is the Fourier transform of your auto covariance function. This will hold only when your auto covariance function between minus infinity to infinity is integrable that means, its integration between these limits is finite it is not infinite. So, under this condition if I write in place of tau equal to 0 what it becomes our uh, auto covariance function becomes your variance and this variance uh, on the right hand side the, uh, in tau uh, if we insert tau equal to 0 here. So, this will become 1 the exponential term will become 1 it will be essentially h omega. So, r 0 will be your covar uh, variance is equal to uh, integration between minus infinity to infinity h omega d omega. So, this is essentially giving you total power between minus infinity to plus infinity in the entire process this is very interesting result now. Uh, so, h um, infinity is just representing the total power contained in your process this is interesting this. So, this is like your uh, minus infinity to infinity as we do with the probability density function there. Tot so, this is telling you total probability uh, in that case that it will exist between minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is interesting result hence the variance of stochastic stationary process represents the total power of the process this is a very important result. So, we can normalize this now. So, if I normalize this power spectral density function h omega divided by sigma square the variance of the function what we call is the normalized power spectral density. So, if I write this power spectral density like this as we have seen the formula here if we have it like this and I divide it by the variance on both side what you will get the left hand side is f omega right hand side if you divide your auto covariance function by the variance it is nothing but your uh, auto correlation function. So, your normalized power spectral density is the Fourier transform of your auto correlation function. So, this is a photo uh, Fourier transform formula again and this is your auto correlation function rho tau. So, f omega is the normalized power spectral density which is Fourier transform of your auto correlation function and similarly we can write a inverse Fourier transform where rho tau is equal to uh, can be obtained from a normalized power spectral density. So, you can get your autocorrelation function from there also. So, just to summarize non-normalized power spectral density function h omega is the Fourier transform of autocovariance function and the normalized power spectral density f omega is the Fourier transform of autocorrelation function. These are very important results which you will use in stochastic stationary random processes. These are very important results and in the next lectures we will see for certain cases when we have a known form of autocorrelation function or a known form uh, some well defined functions for autocorrelation function or autocovariance function how the spectral density will look like for those power spectral density for uh, we will see this in the next uh, coming lectures.